the budget. It sailed through the House like Grandpa's morning constitution. But we might have some blockage in the Senate. Will crafty Dick Durbin have enough juice to make this broken barge sail? Joining us, it's Matt Kibbe. He's from Freedom Works, and he's as disgusted at the budget as you are. Isn't all this bipartisan compromise what this divided country desperately needs? I mean, come on, Matt, it's Christmas. It's Christmas and the, the, the conservatives and the neocons got the defense spending they wanted. The liberals got the domestic spending they wanted. But uh, the taxpayers got screwed one more time. It's going to be interesting to see a number of Senate Republicans are going to vote for cloture, the rule that allows um, this to go to a 50-point, 50 50-vote margin. But a lot of Democrats suffering the burn from Obamacare in red states that are up in 20. 14 are going to be a little bit nervous about this. So I don't know if Dick Durbin can pull it off. I suspect at the end of the day, the spenders, the establishment, the insiders that just want to loosen the belt loop one more time, he they're going to okay. get a victory. Okay, he says that he needs eight Republicans. He's definitely got Susan Collins and John McCain. Jeff Flake is undecided. Mitch McConnell is undecided. But the guys who are running for president, Rubio, Paul, maybe... Cruz. They all say that they're pretty much a no. So who are the undecided Democrats who might go the way of the dark side, meaning our it's, side? It's, it's, it's going to be any Senate Democrat that's up in a red state who voted for Obamacare and is now looking at very miserable polling numbers like Kay Hagan in North Carolina, a number of others. Are they going to vote for this deal? I suspect in the end they're going to go with leadership because they've been walking that plank all along, but it's going to be uncomfortable for them. Matt, uh, there's been a lot of discussion ever since John Boehner was able to pass uh, through the House with pretty flying co colors there that uh, 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 basically the grassroots Tea Party types, your groups, other Club for Growth, you're getting the back of the hand now uh, from all the establishment GOP. Uh, what say you to all of that? Is this, how is the civil war coming between the uh, wacko birds and the angry birds going forward? Well, clearly the, the Republican leadership in the House has decided to give up. They've sided with the lobbyist class. Everything you need to know about this deal you can read on the front page of the Wall Street Journal this morning. Uh, Mitch McConnell is lobbying the lobbyists to organize against the Tea Party because we actually mean it when we say we're going to rein in spending. And you have defense lobbyists, you have people that, that live off of earmarks that are coalescing against us, and I think that's what we're up against. Didn't you kind of screw the pooch, though, by, by betting so heavily on the government shutdown in October? I mean, the Ryan budget is, in many ways, a way to avoid another toxic, horrifying government shutdown. Yeah, I don't think so. I think the fix was in going all the way back to when Republicans took the majority. Because remember, in that first year, in 2010, they promised to cut $100 billion from discretionary spending the moment they took office in, in 2011. And within two days of taking office, they backed away from that. And now we're talking about a $63 billion increase. I, th I think they've wanted to do this all along. Nobody in Washington likes cutting spending. Can we can we talk a little bit about the politically possible, though? I mean, we, we obviously know that we've got this this current situation with the budget. But if you give a little bit here, does it make it easier to worry about the debt limit argument that's going to be coming down the road? I don't I don't think so. I, I think the sequester was the uncomfortable compromise that everybody came to. Nobody exactly liked the way that it went after defensing defense or domestic programs. But it's something that Barack Obama, Senate Democrats and House Republicans actually agreed to. And I think they were surprised as anybody that it actually happened. That was the fallback compromise position that actually relieved taxpayers just a little bit. I don't I don't think there was anything extreme or absolutist about it. But now they've just they've they've just reestablished the status quo. And I don't know how we get to fiscal responsibility from here. OK, but let me ask you this, because it makes you really popular to promise all sorts of great things to your constituents, whether it's keeping a base open or increasing entitlement spending. The rational grown-ups know that we have to cut spending. We no longer can afford these dinosaur expensive programs. But how do you sell that to both parties? See, I think I think what's happening in politics is more of a paradigm shift. I think I think people that would actually like the government to live within its means have more power. They have better information. They're able to connect with each other through social media. And that's the civil war that's going on. It's not Republicans versus Democrats. I don't even think it's Republican versus Tea Party. It's the insiders 
versus Americans that would love for Washington to live within its means, I think that trumps the old model of the dismal model of special interest politics. But this is the empire striking back. This is the lobbyists and the spenders pushing back against this new class of, of empowered citizenry. And are you guys burning up the phones? I don't sense the same kind of frenzied activity happening right now as we saw six months ago or even 12 months ago. Yeah, it seems like a retreat. Yeah, it's, it's, to be honest with you, it's not that hot right now because, shocker, it's Christmas. Real people, <laughs> normal people, don't pay attention to what Washington is doing to them right now. And it's always these last-minute deals. Last uh, January 31st, they did it while everybody was partying. This is how they do it. The only way they can pass a budget that violates their own principles is to do it when normal people have better things to do. All right, Matt Kibbe, this is how we do it. It's like Montel Jordan in a song in Washington, which is kind of scary. Thank you so much for joining us. Coming up next.